And welcome to. You heard it here, folks. Welcome to. No, this is the 2024 Australian Ultimate Championships here. Shipperton in Victoria. My name is Blue Monroe, part of the LTTV crew working with the Australian Flying Disc Association to bring you the very best coverage in the Ultimate happening in Australia right at this moment. This is Division 2. We have Equinox facing off against the Geelong Mud Sharks. Who needs to be a mud shark when you can actually be a mud lark? And we are going to see them fly in just a few moments. Once Equinox uncork the pull, the first pull of the game, we have a race to 13. Fielded early, able to get the first two passes away without much pressure from the defense. Mudlarks playing from the light kit on offense on your screen at the moment. Some nice early strings of passes. It's Matthews Hunter at the moment. Working by way of Phillip to get the disc towards the far sideline. Wise to Mack. Chong very close, decides to come back to Philip as the zone closes down around him. The high scooper over the top finds Chong right on the near sideline, decides to cut wide back to Mack, to Philip. Gets a bite out of the defense. Winds up the scuba, decides to holster. Goes for a short reset back to Mack, finds Chong, nice little chip shot straight through, finds Matthews Hunter. Uses the four side. Timothy Wise goes back to Mack. Philip. What a beautiful put away to put the Mudlarks on the board. One R nil over Equinox. So Equinox are to come out on offense now. Mudlarks having made a strong opening statement. We are awaiting the Equinox response. Aiden Howard with the pole comes in nice and low. Picked up off the turf, finds Lee early. Scrambling, can't get free from the pressure of the defense. Instead, finds Garn, who puts a long shot up. Can't connect, the disc is gonna go back to the Mudlarks. Back 
Early cuts. Isherwood to take. Trotter. Comes out low, finds the turf. Equinox with an opportunity. Kanagata Sabapathy with the disc to quickly recenter to lie, but there's another fumble. Mark Sia can't get it in hand. Isherwood puts it up. Overthrown. Equinox an opportunity. Tight on the mark. Not enough to stop Lee. Really using the wit. A necessary take tight there. Kanagasa Bapati marked by Trotter. Goes wide, goes too wide. Mudlarks going to take possession right in front of the end zone. An attempted Callahan there, but they're still in a great position to put a second point on the board. Trotter with the disc, crossfield hammer. Looks like they have a pick called. Looks to me like Charlie Medic may have been a legitimately positioned defender. And the contact was drawn by the defense. Either way, it's going to go back. Medic's going to pull that one down from Trotter to make it 2 and 0. Oh. But they've called a stall out. Manages to get away with the reset. Finds Isherwood. Too tight in the upfield strike space. Mudlarks are going to score. It's 2 and 0 oh up over Equinox. Mudlarks to come out on defense now. Philip with the big pull. Puts a big shot up. Finds Eden Walker for the score. 
Carolina put them on the board. clearly high on the Equinox side. Having given up those first two points uncontested. The blood is starting to get hot. They're fighting back. Larks to come out on offense now. Huge pull from Equinox. Too huge. It's going to be bricked. Brought to a point about 18 meters in front of the uh, Mud Larks defensive end zone. turn early So they are going to call that one in. That is going to be two apiece. Raiden Cheng for the score. Equinox are back in the game. Hunter starting things off we are going to see a zone defense from Equinox lots of fakes hoping to get some movement we're seeing a lot of cuts happening through that initial cup Timothy Wise through to Angelovich Matthews Hunter goes around the zone, finds Angelovic again. Phillips back as a reset. Broad right back through to Wise, up over the top. Isherwood getting involved. Broad, Matthews Hunter, Isherwood.
Wise right on the doorstep, working through Broad and Phillip to keep possession. Big scoop. Huge fake to shift the defense, finding Isherwood back to Phillip. You can see him winding up something in the overhead space. Slowly use, losing yards as Equinox pour the pressure down. A scuba over the top of the mark. Wise goes for the high release pop backhand. Tries to get jumped in. A curious choice of celebration there as Angelovic jumps that one in to keep Mudlarks ahead by one. Howard with the pull for the Mudlarks to be fielded by Kanagasabapathy. Goes three. Still working, finds Garn. Got Walker stretching into the deep space. Kanagasabapathy puts the long shot up. Can't connect. Mudlarks disc. Developing for him as the zone starts to close back in. Chip shot through to Trotter. Still under pressure, stepping through the defense to get free. Philip under a lot of constriction there. Trotter comes through to Medic. Goes wide. Give Howard something to run on to. Philip. Trotter, far sideline. Philip looking to try and continue that momentum instead. Engages with Trotter. Gets him to start the cut cross field. Mack instead decides to turn on the dial. Firing things back the other way. Trotter available as a reset, but the pressure from the defense is going to shut that one down. It's Johnny Mack. Justin Mack, my apologies. it now Trotter giving him a moment's reprieve finds Justin Mack calling Philip through 
Trotter available as the near side reset. Threads through the defense to give Trotter something to run on to. Justin Mack, Medic, back to Mack. Back to Phillip. Mack through to Medic. Trying to give it back, instead finds Trotter, tumbles on the cutaway. Mack and Trotter doing a lot of work here. Slowly chipping away at the Equinox defense. Goes wide, finds Aiden Howard. Puts it through, finds Mack. Mudlark score. And that's going to be four over the Equinox two. Looks like we are going to have a timeout called. So after that, Equinox are probably going to want to try and put a stop to the momentum. And we'll see what kind of adjustments they're willing or able or intending to make as the match continues. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. So Equinox just breaking the huddle after that timeout. Already with seven players taking the line for the Mudlarks. Currently up by two. Four to two. In this, the second to last match of our stream coverage for the second day of the Australian Ultimate Championships 2024 in Shepparton, Victoria. with the disc for the pull. Nice and long. Fielded by Kanagasabapathy. Seeing a zone defense from the Mudlarks. Equinox very quick to use blades to try and break through it. Lots of one-two passes. Equinox very quick to move the disc. Quicker than the defensive zone can keep up. Open on the near sideline. Sia, number five, goes back to Kanagasabapati. Oh, 
Walker holding that pivot. Goes back. Very patient disc work here from Equinox. Not taking any unnecessary risks, having changed the tempo up a couple of times in this possession alone. Sia with an unbelievable grab to keep that one in hand. A lot of contact on that one somehow. Lee to Walker. To Gunn. Back to Walker. The backhand high release over the top. Trades through for the low release with a little bit of air bounce to find Walker in that far corner. Not quite out of danger yet. Kind of goes above the under pressure. Gunn snaps it through, finds Ray Chen to bring it back to a one-point game. there for Equinox. Eight minutes into our 70 minute game. Race to 13 at the moment. Great pull from Equinox. Touching down in the back corner. Finds Broad. Swings wide to Philip. The zone a little slow to adapt, but he doesn't do anything with that. Huge contact there. Adam Howard taking a substitution after that impact. to tell exactly what happened. Bid from Equinox, but it can't stop Charlie Medic. Broad and Philip. Mudlarks nice and patient. Mine's broad. Come on, 
Trotter doing a lot to help pick apart the Equinox zone. Moving in and through the handler space. Broad, Phillip. Trotter. Now to Medic, near sideline. Holsters the hammer. Philip too close for the reset. Matthews Hunter instead working with Trotter now. Some great work by Lee, Ching, Yang, really aggressive around the disc, stifling the Mudlarks offense. Matthews Hunter now on the far sideline working with Broad. Trotter now facing down the zone. What a find for Hudson. Exactly what the Mudlarks needed to finally start making some headway against the zone, dropping a hammer. And that's gonna be the score for Daniel Matthews Hunter, bringing it back to a two point game. Trotter for the Mudlarks with the disc for the pole. Game to 13. Currently a race to seven to see who can take the half. You can see the disc moving in the wind. Lee and Garn. Overthrows, but he's corrected it. Goes back to lie. Kind of got some apathy. To leave, big tumble. Chin goes back to Lee. Kind of got some apathy, having to cycle out. In favor of a near side shot from Gan. Kanagasabapati's gonna pull it down. Equinox bring it back to within one.
just waiting for the signal. Equinox with the disc in the air. Keeps the pull nice and low towards the near sideline. Scrambles to pick it up. Broad as we see Equinox throw that same zone down again. Matthews Hunter under pressure. Finds Phillip. Calling for the near side is Broad. A laser show straight through. Close approach. Not quite going to be enough. And Jelovic working with Matthews Hunter now. Philip available as the reset. Broad one more time calling for it on the near side. It's Justin Mack is going to close it out though. That is going to be six for the Mudlarks, four for Equinox. One point away from taking half time. Looking to be another timeout called. Mudlarks one break away from halftime. Equinox are going to need a hold and then two back to back breaks if they want to be the ones to walk away with the halftime and the psychological advantage that comes with it. on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. And we have just come back after time out. Uh, we have the Mudlarks on your screen at the moment in light, currently up by two, one point away from taking half in this game to 13, the Australian Ultimate Championships, Division 2, 2024, here in Shipton, Victoria. My name is Blair Munro. I'm joined in the booth by Robin Wild. Now, Robin, you've got a bit of a special relationship with Ulti TV, don't, don't I you? I definitely do. Mike Palmer, the hero of Ulti TV, is my brother. <laughs> So, <laughs> perfect, right. And and what what better example of impartiality could we possibly have? <laughs> than sticking your sister who just walked up on the mic. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Robin, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure. You're a, you're a player with a reasonably established pedigree in your own rights. Mike's yes. about put us, he's about to try and put us on camera. There hey. we go. I Brilliant. have, I've been playing since the year 2000. So Fantastic. the majority of people playing here probably weren't even alive <laughs> when I started playing. Perfect. So yep. that means that you've seen it all, you've done it all. I've seen it all. I've done all. You've been in situations exactly like this before. Yes, I have. What are your thoughts on the first half of the game as we're seeing it so far? Mudlark's up by two. I, I think that there's like really great movement on the field. Um, I'm seeing that neither of them seem to be running out of legs at all. There's a lot of energy in this game. I don't think I could call it at this point. I think it's too close. Absolutely. Oh, it looks like a stall out may have been yes, called. It, ooh. As we always say in Ultimate, you only have to play 10 good seconds of defense. That is true. Now, I find it interesting that on that point, Mudlarks in particular, they're really sticking to that match defense, really trying to isolate those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Yes. Yep. Equinox, we're seeing a huge amount of zone being played, which is really doing a great job of stifling the Mudlarks. So it is a stall. No? Yeah, it's a turn. So we're going to have... That's exciting. Absolutely. Whoa, Matthews Hunter Whoa, with the inside great, break great. for Philip. Oh, beautiful. And that is going to be enough to that take the Mudlarks to half. Excellent. Nice work, Mudlarks. Easy as that. Good. 10 seconds of good defense. A quick seconds. pick up. Inside yep. breakthrow for the score. I know. That defender was so close. Absolutely. <laughs> I just, I think he Maybe. might have still left a fingerprint on that yeah, disc, to I be honest. Threading the needle could have been <laughs> suggested, but yeah. if it works, it works, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix exactly. it. Exactly. Speaking of things, 
Speaking of things that just got broken, it was the Equinox as Mudlarks have scored half Excellent. on a break. So we are going to take a break as well. We'll be back for the exciting second half of this match very, very soon. My name is Blair Monroe. I'm part of the Ulti TV crew. I'm joined in the booth by my karma sister, <laughs> Robin Wilde. And with the proud support of the Australian Flying Disc Association for the Australian Ultimate Championships 2024 in Sheffield, Victoria, we'll be back very soon. in a great spot yeah. he's in a perfect spot yes his massive head has blocked everything oh. that was a huge play yeah. but we have seen yeah. none of it Finny, Finny, he's done it And so we are back, folks, for the 2024 Australian Ultimate Championships. Mudlarks up by three over Equinox at the end of the first half. My name is Blair Munro. I'm joined by a very special guest in the Ulti TV booth. I am Robin Wilde, and I'm Mike Palmer's brother. Oh, sister. Oh, anyway. <laughs> One of them. One of them. Honestly, it's all a spectrum anyway, yeah. folks. But it is Division 2. The only thing that is not a spectrum is the fact that this is Division 2. At Shepparton in Victoria, we've got Aiden Howard back on the field after a 
hefty collision in the first half, but he's come out with a strong pull, feeding back into the front corner of the defensive end zone for Equinox. Had some nice movement across the field. Oh, there's a call. It's a little unclear as to what the stoppage was. Possibly a cramp, just a little bit of impact on one of the landings. I think it might have been a cleating. Ooh. We've all been there. Yep. So the disc is going to come back in Equinox on offense. We're seeing Mudlarks adhere to that match defense, looking at isolating those matchups. Kind of got Zapapathy with a great crossfield cut, but it's not going to be enough. Isha Wood's going to shut that down. Immediately working with Medic to keep pushing back, targeting the far sideline now. Nice pause there on the disc. Reset. Huge hammer for the end zone is oh, going to be good. Great grab. Mudlarks with a nice early, early break to start off the second half generating that turn and I think one of the benefits of being the Mudlarks in that situation because they were able to generate that turn Equinox were forced to, to respond with the match defense they hadn't called a transition zone at the start of the point so Mudlarks they've been ad ad adhering to that match defense the entire game they're trusting those one-on-one -on -one matchups they reckon they can beat those Equinox players in isolation and so forcing that to be the defensive option put on uh put on by Equinox actually gave Mudlarks quite a big advantage they were able to capitalize on quickly with a very short and efficient offense to close out that point. There was lots of patience and finishing off with a beautiful hammer. I mean, One if, of my favorites. If you've got it, right? Yep, you got to <laughs> use it. A cheeky little disc spin there while we wait I for know. the coaches to do their last minute adjustments. Equinox already ready, seven on the line, just waiting for the Mudlarks now. I like how the coach is backing up. Wise with a huge pull. Huge. Dropping down and then fading right Ooh. in front of the Equinox receiver, Lee. Kanagasabapathy under pressure. But he's able to break free. The big forehand shot goes up. Oh, you got this. Nice grab. Sia hoping to close. Oh. Shot down. With style. Kelvin Leong with the score. Beautiful Equinox. Chili taking that disc. Equinox to keep it within two. A fantastic play there. So I work in fashion, and I have to say, that purple, teal, and navy uniform is pretty special. It's one of the color combinations of all time. It is. It is. Uh, no, I, I mean, it's one of those things. It, yes, Ultimate is, we're trying to <laughs> improve and contribute to the legitimacy of the sport. Uh, and, but I think a lot of teams, they, they give up on the aesthetic and yes. saying, oh, we need a light kit, we need a dark kit. Yep. Yep, they, they choose not, not to have colour. Yeah, get a little bit silly yeah. with it. It's fine. Yeah, I'm looking at the mudlarks in the lack of colour, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a simple, I like the minimalist it is a logo. Nice it's design. Efficient, yep. But that splash of colour goes a long way. Here's the pull. Nice big rip with some inside on it. But it's fielded comfortably. Broad and Philip working early. Looks like we're seeing the Equinox commit to that match defense as well. Ooh, oh. And Jelovic putting a hand up. Looks like there may have been some interference or possibly some contact that impeded his ability to make a play. One of the best things about Ultimate is the discussions around these calls. People having to respect each other as players and discuss what the next steps are. And so while we do have game advisors here in Shepparton this weekend, just to provide that little bit of extra surety, 
and just help to facilitate that conversation if players aren't able to come to an agreement. It's still up to the players. It's still a self-officiated sport. It is to the players to make those conversations, those calls, and have uh, the determinations come from the players where possible. The game advisor just gives them an opportunity to have another perspective. And it's one of those things as well. We talk a lot about the spirit of the game uh, as it relates to Ultimate. And I think that a lot of people, um, particularly in recent years, have recognized how spirited it can be to recognize you're not going to come to an agreement with your opposition and, and just, just contest the yep. call and send it back. Do, yep, do a replay. Yep, send it back. Being, being spirited doesn't mean having to resolve things through conversation. It's, it's yep. recognizing when resolution is going to be better displayed by the disc. Yeah, yep. Um, my young self wouldn't have taken that on, but <laughs> as I've played from many decades, um, <laughs> yeah, you do realize that there's actually no point in just like going over and over, just send it back. I feel like they've handled it well. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and it looks like Time a timeout out. has been called. A totally reasonable thing. Smart move. Yeah, having so so. Robin, talk talk to me. Why was why is it a good call to make a timeout after a stoppage like that? Everyone is behind you. You've got the disc on the line, and you've got an option of having everyone running past you, which is a difficult throw to make. You've got to get the disc in front of them and timed in the right position. Whereas if you just call a stop, you can set your play. You can. You can choose where you want your people. So all of the offense will set up exactly where they want it. They talk about tactics. They make their play. Um, there's a few examples, like an ISO play that you can do in the end zone where you pick one person and they're the person that's going to score. Oh. Another fantastic <laughs> display of color from Ulti TV's <laughs> own Mike Palmer. Yes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're, you're absolutely right, Robin. Yep. The, the, the Ness is uh, sort of that ability. Once that disc is checked and brought to the front of the end zone, it's live. Your opposition can start a stall count. They're yep. going to eat up valuable time while the rest of your yep. players get into a good position to attack the end zone. Yep. So just using a timeout is a great opportunity to, Definitely. to also, not sacrifice that time. Yep, absolutely. Everybody's stopped and still when there's a call like that. And so to fire up again and get going and switch your brain on, it takes like moments, which is a waste of the stall count. So we are so. going to see Angelovic for the Mudlarks to initiate. The offense will be given an opportunity to set up first. Yep. Once it has been confirmed that they have taken their place, they'll give the defense an opportunity to then set up themselves. And once the disc is checked in and we're live, we're about to see it happen. There it is, the ISO play, exactly as you Very called effective. it. Very effective. It's what I would have done. Daniel Matthews Hunter being chosen as the downfield receiver to make the first move. And I think the key thing there is quite often when you're looking at live play in the middle of a position, in the middle of a point, you run a lot of typical cutting patterns. And quite often if you get some, some of those patterns mistimed, you'll get two players cutting at the same time, cutting to the yeah. same space. Which means you have two defenders in the same space as well as those players. Exactly. And, and that space almost becomes unusable with all the bodies in it. And so when you're looking for fakes, if you're watching again these games at home, Look for those fakes. Try and recognize what that fake is communicating to those downfield receivers. Hey, your defender's too close to you, and it's you've got on. a buddy behind you. It's not going to happen. Now, from a stopped, uh, from a stoppage, from a timeout, from the ability to call a play, it can be really, really clear. One person is going to cut, and here's where they're going to cut to, mm -hmm. which means everyone else can just do their job by holding that space and giving that person room to work. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. <laughs> I like the energy when you're standing on the line waiting for the pool to come up. There's definitely something about that, that nervous energy. It's definitely addictive. It's, it's electric. It's, it really is fantastic. We're going to see Aiden Howard put up a big shot. Oh, they've got some great pools in their pocket. Fielded wonderfully by Kanagasa Bapati. Finding Lee, a huge run Ooh, through good attempt. attempt. And putting the flick shot. Up. That's a beautiful pass. Oh, everyone's everyone's come up short. Huge, 
great work by the defense there to pressure the offense to mm -hmm. mistiming their jumps. That is uh, true. We're always told defense goes early. And that yep. is exactly why. Yep. A little bit of miscommunication there. Bit of an apology, not sure why. Oh, I thought it was a pick. Stop the play. Ah, got it. Finds the up line in Elliot Trotter. Big drive, continues along that far sideline. I would get it off the line at this point if possible. Nice aggressive marks by the defense, trying to stop that from happening though, allowing those continued line drives. We've got Isherwood. Whoa. Ooh, is there a call? Looks like a retracted, a retracted call. Retracted call, great layout D. Huge block there for Equinox to get back position. Oh, look at, oh, disappointing. And they're gonna hustle this through. That oh, is gonna, do. that's gonna do it. <laughs> Mudlarks. Now on 10, up over the Equinox 5, a race to 13. Three more points from the Mudlarks if they can keep up the pressure like they just displayed on that point. They're looking very calm and collected. They've got a tall line. I'm just watching them all. On average, I'd say, yeah, a fair, a fair bit taller than Equinox. Yep. And they're able to utilize that really well. Uh, as well, and both yeah. offensively and defensively. Definitely. We've seen that a lot of the handlers for uh, Equinox tend to have a really low release on their hucks, and yep. one of the one of the sort of unintended consequences that is that quite often the front edge of the disc is levered up, which yep. means that there's a lot of height under those discs towards the later stages of the flight path, and if you've got yep. a tall defensive structure like the Mudlarks do, it's yep. really easy for them to get into a good position and Definitely. start making plays. Yep. So we've got another on the line waiting for that next point. We need some some fire from Equinox. They look like they're firing up. Yeah, Justin Mack with the disc to pull for the Mudlarks. Now, we've seen a lot of match defense from the Mudlarks. Equinox, a, lo a lot of the... the I'm assuming if they've, if they've been running a zone, they've been practicing a lot of zone offense in their in their trainings and their practices it isn't working if they're being dominated in those person matchups yeah so what changes can they make to their play that's going to allow them to remain competitive in the match absolutely wide shot to kanagasa Bapati. he's had some uh, calm with the disc thus far gone with the big arm They've got a floaty disc with some tall people defending. Oh. But it's secure. And it turns out maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's if the answer. If you know that they've got a tall <laughs> defender, just have another receiver there to have play cleaner. Have a couple up. more people there. And that is going to work for them, certainly on this position. Equinox now on six against the Mudlarks, 10. We that's are the fire up they needed. Absolutely. I mean, you asked for it, and they gave it to you. We are entering the 60th minute of our match with a 70 minute soft cap. We'll talk a little bit more about what that implies as we get closer to the end of the game. I believe that was number 29, Eden yep. Walker with the score there. That's a beautiful disc. You see his wind up in the throw, really firm grip on the disc. Mm and then lots of spin, lots of wrist as he pulls that through with his whole body. It's interesting that when you're throwing, it's a full body um, moment. There's no one thing that can be stronger than the others. You've got to get that all coordinated and all of your muscles engaged that need to be used. Ab absolutely, <laughs> otherwise you, you really, you'll find that um, you leave a lot on the table, not just in terms of distance, in terms of stability, but also just with regards to the timing. 
the, the ranges are so different as you start looking to use more and more of your musculature. Absolutely. And, and the coordination of it as well. Big hammer oh. comes cross field. Oh, nice grab. And Jelovic is coming down with it. Goes back to Matthews Hunter. Some good defense from Equinox. Broad puts the big forehand up. For oh, Angelovic for the score, nice Mudlarks. Work. Nice goal. Some really good chili on the disc there. Calmness at the end zone line. There is a thing in Ultimate called end zone fever. It's very common in all levels of Ultimate. <laughs> when you get to the end zone, you get a bit, a bit of too much blood in your um, in your brain and. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to make good decisions. Or you really desperately want to score, so you just try to make anything work. That's so that. it's not an easy thing to be standing there calmly, doing your fakes, and then sending a beautiful disc like that. That's exactly it. It's, it's particularly when you find yourself in a situation. Particularly when you find yourself in a situation where you're one pass away from scoring. Yes. You know, the reason you don't see end zone fever at the defensive end zone is because mm -hmm. you recognize in your mind, we need to string together a number of passes in order yep. to use up the field. When you're yep. standing on the edge of glory right there. <laughs> edge of glory. You, and you know that one pass is all it's going to take. It's really difficult to maintain that composure and to use your one pass to reset the disc and give someone else an opportunity. But great work by Mudlarks to do that. We're going to see them come out on defense. Aiden Howard with another huge pull. Nice and Lovely long. Lovely placement. I'm liking the aggression that I'm seeing in Equinox when it comes to attacking Absolutely. the pull. Absolutely. They're catching it. Beautiful pass. Eden Walker there puts a shot up, oh. looking for number 19. Is he wrong footed? Oh, what a grab. Back to backs. So that's both back-to-backs. Oh, both of the two most recent scores by Equinox have been number 19. But it looks like a... We're calling that a goal? We're calling that a goal, <laughs> folks. Well, I think all the players had already. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be 11-7. Now, Robin, in a few moments, you are going to have I to depart. I am. Because you actually have a game on I very do shortly. Indeed. And you're going to ask me who I'm playing, and I, I have am. no idea. I was going to ask who you're playing it's for. <laughs> okay, I play for Zag Theory. We are an Adelaide team. Um, our the club is Zig Theory, and they're playing Div 1, and um, they're Div 1 Nationals. And so we are bringing it out here for the Div Tours, um, some of the older people. But we've got some young legs that we're training up to run for us, which is very exciting. We've Fantastic. had a great tournament, only one loss, so very pleased. All right, well, yes. hopefully we might get a chance to see you on the stream a little bit later absolutely on. absolutely love that. I might even do a happy dance for you. Oh, uh, could, <laughs> could not be happier to hear it. Excellent. Uh, but thank you for all your hard work, Ulti TV. Come now? All right. <laughs> Being yeah, summoned I'm by I'm coming. I'm coming Brother to happy Mike dance to do a happy right dance now. on the microphone. I will see you all soon. Thank you so much, Robert. And the Equinox, the big pole's going to come on up. Lot of float underneath it. Fielded by Philip goes to Broad. Nice cross field shot to Angelovic again. Back to center field. For Wise. Can't get the reset. Yes, he can. It's Broad. Matthews Hunter. Straight up to Philip. Back to Broad on a nice little cross cut. Big hammer. Finds the turf instead. Equinox with an opportunity. Just waiting for a few things to resolve before we start again. Looks like things have been checked in. Play is live. Hey, 
Jelovic applying a lot of pressure on the mark. They're able to slip through, takes a one-handed grab and another stoppage. Comfortable around reset. Finds Yang. The big flick hook. Eaten up by Nathaniel Tan. Hopes to close. He's got it. Nathaniel Tan's gonna score, putting Equinox back within three. Teams breaking into their respective huddles to see what, if any, adjustments they're looking to make as the game reaches its conclusion. Only a couple of minutes left on the clock. Mudlarks two points away from winning. They will be coming out of this next point on offense. And so as the match reaches its closing stages, we're very, very excited to bring you the last few moments of this fantastic clash between the Mudlarks and Equinox. And we will do so after a short break. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate every So, with the Mudlarks having already broken the huddle, they're going to take the line. Just jumping off the camera for a sec, Blair. Just wanted to give a shout out to Elliot Trotter, who's playing here, third from the left on the Mudlarks line. Um, not that you can see them, but uh, uh, he invited me in 2014 to the famous Leco to WC and under 24s, and that kind of gave me a start in Europe. Uh, I think we went on to do Windmill with Sky Magazine in 2015, uh, and that caused us, me as Ulti TV, to be introduced to Fanseat, and then we got a contract to film all these stuff over Europe and the rest is history. So I just want a massive thank you and shout out to Elliot Trotter, respect, he's a champ. And he's well on his way to being a champ here as Mudlarks are two points away from a win. Working on offense. Matthews Hunter making himself busy on the field. Phillips winds up the big huck. Decides instead to reset to Trotter. Equinox trying for a rolling defense. Doesn't quite make the switch. A little dad backhand through. Goes back to Phillips now. Matthews Hunter stretching into a deep cut. And Jelovic pushes all the way wide to find Mark Isherwood. That is going to be the soft cap hooter. And so what that means is we are going to play this point. Whatever the score at the end of this point will add one to the highest total and it will be a flat race to that number. If Mudlark score here, it'll be a game to 13. If Equinox score here, it's going to be a game to 12. An 
injury sub called for Equinox. Mudlarks will be given an opportunity to make a substitution if they choose. Blades across the front, finds Kelvin Lau. Eden Walker, working with Lee, back to Lau. Marked by Phillips, being given up the sideline. Isha Wood making a play. Gonna eat it up, he's calling for someone to push into the deep space. The flick shot goes up, looking for Isha Wood. Can he get it? Yes, he can. Mudlark score. The score is 12-8. It's a race to 13. One more Mudlark's break is going to put it away. with what he hopes is going to be the last pull of the game. That same high inside out edge. Kanagasabapati able to field it comfortably. A cold drop. It's going to give the disc back. And that's going to be a mudlark victory. They've only gone and done it, folks. 13 to 8 over Equinox. What a fantastic performance by both of these teams. Only a few minutes past the soft cap. We've got one more game on the streaming schedule for you today, folks. What a pleasure it has been to be your eyes and ears on the ground to bring you context and commentary for the very best sport in all the world being played here in Shepparton, Victoria, in Australia. It's the Australian Ultimate Championships. 2024 Division 2. My name is Blue Monroe with the Ultra TV crew and the support of the Australian Flying Disc Association. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. TV.